just want to say from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. The double champ does what the f he wants. Testing. Yeah, that's good. What that's is good. up, y'all? Happy What's Monday. This is the All or Nothing Show. My name is Austin, and I got my co-host, my boys, the boss babes. Yeah, Brock. Brock. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, Griffin. what's the deal with the Corvette? Oh, oh yeah. Uh, I let a guy. He needed a loaner, so I, you know, it was rainy, so I let him borrow the the vet for the. Yeah, explain the story. Well, anyways, I. Yeah, Austin. Well, I'm already was, cracking. Look, I'm so thirsty. Austin needed a ride on Friday, and then on Saturday he has a Corvette. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, so we had the party in the gym this past weekend, which we can cover in a little bit. But this will lead into it. A couple. I almost like had a little car show going out in the parking lot. We had a GTR Trix GTR was out yeah. there, and then that badass Corvette that just pulled up like made his own spot up yeah. near the fucking right thing. near the freeway Which, spot if i had a if i had a vet i'd probably when do you're the same a nice thing. car they let you do it <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh i went out there took some pictures with it uh muscle car you know get it well, anyways yeah. you got muscle he's yeah. got the car <laughs> <laughs> took some pictures posted it and was like you know hey if you work hard and you're that ceo type mindset you get the uh, you get to create the opportunities to have your boy catching a flex right outside a stranger's vet, you know? And uh, so many people just read, or didn't even read the caption. No, they didn't read it. And just saw the picture. I saw like, uh, people, I pray would. Pray emoji, <laughs> you earned this. I would I would call them out by name, but it's not worth it. There's so many comments that are like, wow, man, congrats. So proud of you. Like, this goals, that. yeah. Yeah, goals. And you're I'm like, like Yo, dude, you, it's a, clearly a joke you, <laughs> if well, you read you can it. come out and take a picture with it too next time. Yeah. Come on out. It's, it's a goal. It's an easy goal. He traded yeah. in the Honda Del Sol. Yeah. Oh shit. shit. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was a badass fat. Ended up the guy. I ended up following him shortly after that. I was like, "Fuck it, let me give the guy a follow." And uh, he commented. I don't know if y'all saw. He commented yeah. on it. He I was, was about like, to check. What did he, he said? Nice looking vet. Wonders who. Wonder whose it is. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, man, beautiful car," <laughs> which it was. But uh, which by the way, did y'all see that video clip I sent of y'all or him on like that bridge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred and forty like that. Dang. What are you talking about? I sent you all a video in the DMs, bitch. Oh, I gotta check it. Don't leak them in the, yeah. in the group. <laughs> anyway, voodoo. Yeah, voodoo. We're rocking first. The- first voodoo since we had our road trip to pick up the equipment. Yeah, on the show at least. This is Raid's Energy Voodoo, which says limited edition, but they've kept it around for about two years now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they do that with the Apollo days, too. Yeah. 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 I like it like that though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably helps us sell more. We gotta fun. keep keep it in stock. Keep it in yeah. stock before they run out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, it's a good one. Is it still a nine to you, Griffin? Let me see. Because I remember he gave that bitch like a nine point something, nine five. To me it's like an eight nine. It's gone down no, it's a eight, little bit. For sure. I would definitely say like eight six, eight seven. I feel like there's no way you could reasonably put it below an eight. Unless you really hate orange things. So this is like a, a cream like cream orange sickle, I'll call right? it yeah, an orange I w- cream I sickle, like yeah. that it's more like blood orange versus like a tangerine yes. kind of orange. Yes. Because like yeah, the that is a mimosa is a different kind of orange. And I was comparing it to like the rain orange sickle. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And Ooh. I like this one better to me. Ah, I do. I'd have it's to have li- them side by side. It's lighter f- in flavor for me. It definitely is lighter. The other one yeah. is uh, very, very strong. It's not bad, the rain one, but pretty good. Pretty good. And plus, there's some other shit that this has that rain doesn't have. Someone asked about uh, rain yesterday, about like rains or bangs. And I was like, the problem is, again, like, if we sell it for three dollars, like we do our other drinks, yeah. you can go to the Wawa. Literally, like now you don't even have to hit a light; just hit the stop sign, take yep. a left. You're at the Wawa; they're going to sell you two for like four fifty. So the it's other like thing too. I feel like is, you know, when something becomes like a gas station brand, like I don't know. I feel like you almost want to carry something a little bit more like exclusive in your in your. Kind of like C four and Walmart. Yeah, yeah. That should tell you something. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. I mean, some brick and mortar stores that we're in still carry it just because people come in for that and they see it. They got great marketing and they have a huge, a great. They just have a huge marketing budget, so yeah. it drives people into the store to get it. But like same day, Walmart wants all or nothing, but yeah. you turned them down. You no, said yeah. no. I was like, no, <laughs> y'all aren't ready for it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> y'all aren't ready. But 
New Year 2021, right? Yeah. Party Good in the party Gym in was the killer. Gym. Yeah, I want to talk about that a little bit. So Let's the Party go. in the Gym was awesome. Uh, did things a little bit differently this time. So we did do a $5 fee, but um, we had the Shore Pump Nutrition Corner table there the entire time. So great samples, great options, different products you can look at, try out. Um, so I know I saw a few people trying different products, protein powders, pre-workouts while they were there and talking to Erica. And then also Gym Flow, of course, killed it as usual. Great table. Uh, multiple products out and then this next one obviously you have walk the lime too which would be another flavor people can try out uh but great great turnout especially for again like the circumstances being closer to new year's um, it was yeah. good to see a lot of new faces and not good the same people yeah, doors good open. day doors for it open. doors were open it was january. low 60s in january so i was like great let's keep that heat bill down <laughs> yeah. um and uh it was a great time you know yeah. um which Raffle thing? winners won. Yeah. So uh, when, when we donated one hundred and ten dollars, I, I submitted it this morning to uh, the Simper Five Funds. It was great to uh, raise that money. And uh, if you didn't know, fifty percent of the proceeds that we made from those Dave Pass fees of five dollars went to uh, Simper Five this month. And in future uh, months, we're going to do different charities. So yeah. nice. it's great to do that. Would love to alternate through some, but yeah, huge thank you for everybody coming out, donating, yeah, supporting the event, and building this community each each and every month. Having more new faces come out, which yeah. is awesome. And the other thing I feel like that it did happen when we were doing it before we were here, but I really do feel like now with them, since we've been doing it, well, I guess it's only been two months, but I do feel like seeing the same familiar faces, it makes me happy to see that like this is something that people look forward to every yeah. month to like get together with their friends or like take a trip up from somewhere, come check it out. And like, I don't know, just have that surge of uh energy or like drive again and kind of i never felt like i uh obviously you like know what community is and what it means but i feel like you know growing up as a kid it's like i don't know like you have your your circles in school or at the rec soccer like games and things like that but like really i feel like we really do have like a community of so many different people that live all around areas when we have these events like i really recognize it like it's a really great like display or example of what community looks like in my opinion yeah 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. and like it it hits me every time even at the last yeah bump mine up i was gonna say all bump, three, yeah mine bit. mine got a little higher okay no i'm just kidding <laughs> I, just, I can't even more see it name, yeah. people need to hear a little bit more me <laughs> Get that. But uh, even new mics, we're we're we're, we're yeah. Uh, yeah, making oh, improvements. Yeah, we did, did we we, did, we I don't think not. we touched on it. Yeah, new mics. Hopefully, all are appreciating the sounds and yeah. vibes. Yeah, hopefully, and sound quality is good. Yeah. Hopefully, it won't take a week or so to figure it out. Yeah, they hopefully gave me sh- they gave right me shit now. yesterday about it, but the new mics were bought and they're here right now. I think they sound better they and uh, more they improvements do. as far as video and overall experience will be going into 2021 with a bang. Yep, putting it back into so share it with people. We gotta blow this podcast. Please share it. Um, but I did notice from like the last one and even this one, like the community aspect yeah. of just getting people fired up with the, I mean, the deadlifts, that was awesome. Some were a little scary to watch, but I'm rooting for you. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, seeing everybody out there yelling, cheering and, you know, getting everybody fired up to do some heavy PRs and stuff like that. It's cool to Everyone see. Everyone needs like a good time and a good thing to look forward yep. to, especially with like, you know, I'm not the type to like drag on 2020 is like the worst year ever and this or that although like i know as a whole it was a crap year for most people but i just feel like it's a great kind of rebound going into the new year or just something great to look forward to each month like hang out with some people meet new friends have a great lift um and just you know experience a different gym if you go to a different yeah. gym so um yeah i'm looking forward to the next one and for then sure. the next one yeah the next one Hopefully we'll have uh, some cool ideas. And we've been brainstorming a little bit, probably a little bit more than we need to, though. Or we should do a little bit more than we have been on uh, maybe more some vendors, future of, yeah. uh, events, vendors, and, like, things that we can throw into these to make them, you know, even more, more exciting. More spicy, yeah. So we don't want to stay stagnant with them. Absolutely. They're very exciting. But uh, goals have been going good, fellas. It's 2021. Are we, we crushing them or what? Oh, we're crushing them. We're yeah. crushing them. Well, I'm not gonna brag myself long about this. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All right, guys, <laughs> set the Take the pee break. No, no, but uh, I'll, I'll just touch on it because on my Instagram, you mentioned it to me this morning. Yeah. Um, because I really do uh, appreciate it when I feel like you know I'm not in a running circle really. I've surrounded myself with like lifters. All my followers are generally lifters, so it's like I get it when I post running content. Most people are like, eh, I don't really care. Like, I not me. Like, okay, might look impressive, but not me. But yesterday, uh, after my shoulder and arm workout, um. 
lingered around a little bit before I got on the treadmill to run um, because I was, I was going to run outside, but then it was drizzly, and I was like, eh, don't really feel like that, but I'll still get it done on the treadmill. And Griff and I were getting some cool photos, so it ended up taking a little bit longer than people on the treadmill. Anyway, finally got around to it, did my three miles, but didn't really like feel like I accomplished anything really with it. It was just kind of like tossed in. And then later when Maddie like asked how my run was, I was like, man, that was just like an average like performance. And I just feel like I wouldn't be satisfied with that. So went ahead and like I had the time. So went home or before I got home, I went and ran another four miles. Um, it just felt like a lot more accomplished. And uh, I don't know. I feel like just like the little things like making each workout count um, and not just settling. Like sometimes I'm sure you guys will start a workout and maybe squats don't go as planned or bench don't go as planned. And sometimes you're like, well, like, you know, and then you just kind of carry on throughout the rest of the workout. Or maybe that's just me. Like, sometimes if no. I have a really bad compound lift, it's me. it throws off the workout, right? Um, but some, you, I don't know, it's, it's cliche, but, like, you can't just look at it like that. And so you got to, you know, try to make every exercise count because it's not, it's you can't just throw in the towel for the first exercise. So um, same kind of concept with the run, but goals are going well, crushing it. I still look at my pace most times after these runs, and I'm like, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> but um, but it's getting, it's, you know, run one built in a day. I feel like the, like, a little off topic, but talking about running, we should maybe do something when it gets a little warmer so we can do it outside at a track, a nice track. Maybe I'll train for it. Maybe I'll just show up and strap up and whoop some ass. We do a one mile run. Who oh, wins fuck. all out? Oh dang! Because I'm not like, a speed yeah. guy. I well, will be I better. Mean, a mile. I'll be you better. Can have, but so much speed in a mile. That's not very far away. That's like four laps is a mile. So we can do that. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah, most, most most the yeah. yeah, most tracks. Yeah, yeah, most tracks are four laps. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what's uh, that guy's name? Prefontaine. Uh, what scares me because I feel like I definitely beat you. The question is, I feel like <laughs> for some reason Griffin would have some speed in those little uh, footsie shoes he's got, and he'd just fucking you fly. Hear him coming. Yeah. yeah, I lost my old tracks. Yeah, place. like hasn't ran in like years, but then he just come dude, out and just that just hurt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Nah. Yeah, I think I could do it. I might have to. Like, I'm not saying that. you couldn't complete well, the mile. I'm no, saying. Hold on. Now we're talking. That was like almost an insult there. No. I'm saying that I would beat you in time. Because well, you'd I'm, finish. How are you going to beat me in time if I'm ahead of you the whole time? Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> my thing is, you'll probably get two laps in, and then you realize, oh, fuck. I went too fast too soon. And then you'd be like dragging ass the last two oh. laps. I think I got a lot of heart. I got a lot of ego. Yeah, that's I think true. That. But I it only carries your lungs. It, it, it carries your lungs. So Toenails, especially because you don't do a ton of cardio no. either. So, but I I'd sh- love to do like, that. <laughs> Sarah talks shit the whole time. We did a five k. It's my first ever five k, and probably my only. We did one like two years ago, right before I started prep for the show. And she talked whole sh- like all tons of shit a month before it. She was like, "You haven't ran a bit. What the fuck have you been doing? You haven't been training for it. You haven't done anything." I was like. I'm just gonna show up, and I'm gonna be all ego and pride. Yeah, all or nothing, baby. And <laughs> how'd it go? Two scoops of red I out. got an award for the fastest in my age group, which was from 20 to 30 year old, 21 to 30, I think. Got an award, fastest time. I don't remember my time. I'd have to ask Sarah, but I got this a fucking medal for it. Nice. Like how every power lifter who competes oh. and no, nobody else oh. and nobody else shows, <laughs> but nobody Bro. else in my age group showed I up. I was looking. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at someone's profile the other day just because we talk about this, and it was like four time national powerlifting champion. And I was like, it was some girl, and like she squats like 275, like respectable for sure. But I'm like, there's no way in hell this is a national powerlifting record in any kind of category. Yeah. Like, what is, I don't know where they make these up. It's like the same way the with like ES, yeah. Leave. It's like ESPN when they tweet like, yeah, this is the first time LeBron James has scored 32 points on a Friday night in October oh, like in like variable. 20 minutes. Yeah, every yeah. variable. I feel like that's how they come up with these records. Yeah. It's like know, they they throw out records like participation trophies. That's what it seems like. You either did it or you didn't. Like the like it should be like a flat standard. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I did that 5K pretty quickly. Now, I will say there were some young kids that were rolling past me, but yeah, yeah, kids, man. Yeah, these kids. fucking kids. <laughs> fucking yeah. kids. I think that's what kept me going for real during that whole thing. Just when you'd see yeah. like a little 10-year-old run past, you're like, fuck Well, me. I, um, even like to this day, like my, when I ran the 10K, it's faster than I've ever ran like six miles just yeah. because I think when I'm I'm jogging along other people, 
I hate being stuck behind someone, so I'd zoom past yeah. one person. Yep. Then I'm like, oh shit, I zoom past another person, and then the next thing you know, you're running like twenty Reminds seconds me past. Of the Indian Death Trot. Did you ever? Oh yeah, for, no. for baseball, we used the to do it. The last guy has to run to the front, and then you're the in last like a guy then has line. to run to the no, front. Never so you have to do like yeah, you're in a line jogging like this, and then the you know, guy would you have, have to, to run the front. It you gas front. it, yeah. but then you're good for a bit because then other people have to gas it um, to get above you. So, wouldn't but the, you'll do it for like a mile. Wouldn't the goal be, hey, everybody just run slow as shit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's that's what well, you, you usually communicate. Have one person. Yeah, yeah you always have kid one kid in class that's like, hey, you didn't check for who did the homework oh, or something guy. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'd love to set a. A date on the board. I mean, through after we're done, yeah, we set a date yeah, on the board for March. Maybe yeah, something. March or April. February I mean, look, 29th. you've got plenty of time. You've already been training for a while. Don't let me just show up, throw some running shoes oh, on. Oh, it won't happen. It won't happen. <laughs> just And I'll wear the jean jorts and everything. It won't just, happen. Yeah. Yeah. What about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, though, man. I, I really, like, struggle with speed. I was talking to my friend last week about it when we were running. Because, like, distance, it's more just, like, mental, like, attrition. It's just, yeah. like... I'm doing this, like you said, like pride and ego. But with with speed, like I might have the uh, endurance to, I might have the ability to run faster. But then running faster, it's kind of like pushing the extra five reps on leg sure. extension. It's like, oh, I'm capable of doing this. It just sucks Especially really long. Especially if you've been doing distance for so long. Yeah, you've been doing yeah. Seven, 10 miles. And so, that's like a, yesterday, totally I ran like uh, I did like a mile kind of warm up, and then I did one mile like hard pace and saw saw where I was at. I think I did like a seven twenty, which I All could right. not hold. I might but actually be able to keep up then. Yeah. Well, that I mean, we that was, but that was for a distance though. Like that wasn't. Yeah, just that like was one like. Mile. Yeah, it wasn't like, like my knowing that. Hey, I'm done at one. Yeah, mile. and that wasn't like a uh, all out percent. Dang. That's probably ninety percent. I don't 90%. know what I could run right now. Might I know I've a, done a seven minute. Train high, sleep low, or is it the opposite? Train low, sleep high. What's the thing for altitude training? I'll have to do that. Like, are you gonna secret. wear one of those masks? And yeah. Oh shit! Sleep upside down. <laughs> All of a sudden, come out and I don't know. I just, through. you know, I know that you say you don't think you're probably fast or you don't have the speed, but when it comes down to it, it's you, me, and him on that line, and we're just like, oh, hey. I'll go, yeah, I'll go. like it'll kick in. I know yeah. it will for me. What yeah. about uh, your new splint, Austin? Oh, uh, switching gears, lifting. It's been going well. First week was a little rough, <laughs> having to do some two a days or whatever. <laughs> Can you clients. explain the split? Yeah, uh, so finally I have it all laid out, it. and my new split is a two upper body days, two lower body days, an arm day, and then like a core mobility day type mm -hmm. deal, stretching, stuff like that. But uh, it's push upper body, then right after that would be a push lower body, which would be like a quad dominant day, mm -hmm. then a pull upper body day, and then a pull lower body day, which would be a glute and hamstring dominant day. Mm -hmm. Then after that, obviously bro bro time with the arm absolutely, day absolutely absolutely then a little mobility work which was rough this week because i just realized how bad bad my mobility is my <laughs> hips and ankles like i need a ton of attention with my ankles my ankles are i think that's what's really been affecting my squat which leads up to my hamstrings my glutes you my know hips where ankle uh, mobility comes from tight calves you've been training calves too much man oh, shit i gotta oh. let them loose you gotta yeah. let them loose <laughs> <laughs> but uh did you just watch a youtube video for yeah. that yeah I did like a 20 minute class. Like it was like almost like a yoga slash, like holding some poses and doing like a few reps of stuff. But nice. I realized that, yeah, my ankles need a ton of work. I enjoy uh, seeing Austin in the morning training there. It kind of like gives me like one other person in the gym, but like we both kind of fuck off and mine are in business, which is good. Um, and then I, sometimes he'll take off his headphones. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's enjoying like the music. And then, like, some other You'll song I me. know he hates, and he puts <laughs> them back on. Oh, and he's like, okay. he's I, like, fuck this shit. I thought we were going to have that yesterday, but uh, I showed up and the yeah. CEO was sleeping. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, yeah, he texts me, and he I realized he was here at, like, 7. And I was like, oh, shit, like, for once. Because Saturday he said, I'll be here, like, somewhere around, like, I think, like, I think he said, like, 7 to 10 or something to get yeah. there. So I figured, like, usually he rolls in, like, 9 or 10. Yeah. And most Sundays... He's rolling in right when I'm finishing. So I was like, okay. And so, yeah, he showed up at 7. I was like, damn, now I felt late. You didn't – you must not have saw the timestamp when that 2.30 a.m. leg shaving picture <laughs> that he sent me. Yeah, I didn't see the timestamp. Like, yeah, that yeah. guy was up. He told me yeah. he, like, started it, and then he's like, nah, fuck Slept this. And it. then he, like – yeah, and then he just <laughs> did it, which, which is a little update, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, you know, all three carry into that, and also your uh, new program that you'll probably eventually get into if you want to touch. Of course, of course. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's see. I don't even know how to like delve into this subject. Uh, well, Brock has he shaves his legs. That three years running, I think. He always, I feel like since we've all moved into the same facility and are around each other every day, we kind of glean different things from each other. I feel like we pick on, up on different things from each other. And uh, some things like Brock will ha- take from me or Austin will take from Brock or this or that. <clears throat> and uh, so I keep getting nagged about like, oh, you need to just sh- trim them. You need to just shave them. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, when are you going to do that? And I just feel like for me, Ever since I was, like, 12 or 13 and first started to get, like, leg hair, I was like, I'm a man. Like, yeah, (laughs) that is, like, the bastion of masculinity. And it is funny because, you know, I do trim, like, my chest. I do trim, like, you know, in general. Um, But legs. Ladies. (laughs) Manscaped. Clean. Uh, I'll keep it PG. But uh, (laughs) smooth. that's a skill in itself to not nick yourself, too, because that hurts more than anything. But anyway. Uh, the legs have always been kept out of the equation, basically, just because, I don't know, I just, I always just feel like that's just a manly thing, hairy legs, basically. Yeah. Or what is, what is Corn Pop talk about with the, the pool and the hairy legs? You know the fuck I mean? is Corn Pop? You know when Biden <laughs> would talk about that thing? At the pool. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kid comes up and <laughs> he grabs my leg, runs his hand down my leg, yeah. If you know, you know. Don't worry I about don't it. Know. Yeah. I don't well, want to know. I, it's some old Biden yeah, quote. But, um, old. It just made me laugh. But anyway, so then Austin comes in the other day, shave legs. Yep. And Smooth. his calves looked great. Tremendous. Great Hot. definition, veins, quads. And he has a, uh, a stage photo right behind uh, the podcast set up right here. And the legs looked even better than the show day. And it's like what the heck like where did that come from Mm -hmm. and so then jake austin's brother came in he had shaved legs too so i was like okay i can't be the only one yeah Yeah. (laughs) so (laughs) then i went home that night after the party in the gym and i was like all right new me like we're gonna hit it and i made one swipe down the top of my thigh because i was like i'm not gonna go too far just in case and uh i was like Mm, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't like it. It well, looks my very girlfriend pasty. think of me. Yeah, yeah it looks very Buddha, pasty. Buddha, look away. I know. <laughs> Your father's not himself. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then I went to bed, and then I woke up just out of nowhere at like 2.30 in the morning, and I was like, all right, let's hit it. So <laughs> I just made a big swipe down the front so you couldn't back out, and then uh, just went ahead and did it. And I have to say, it's very weird because – I just feel like it's just weird to me, I don't know, to have smooth legs. Now that you have pants on, how did it feel putting your pants on? Uh, well, Because when I put on like, jeans, it's weird. When you trim like your happy trail or something, That's you kind of find that your shirt catches on it, like the stubble yeah. almost. So I almost feel like at least the first day, especially doing hamstring curls, I was like, I feel like the sweat oh, in yeah, the back of that's my true. knee, which is a weird feeling. Yeah, that is a weird um, feeling. But I will say, like, it does look good. And I yeah. see potential that there yes. wasn't before. So, Listen, cool. your first shower after shaving them. Oh, yeah. Well, I got that coconut oil and was lathering <laughs> up. He's got the Victoria's Secret yeah. scrub. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Man, I feel like a woman. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, kind of just a little anecdote there. But, yeah, um, this year I really wanted to – Not necessarily new year, new me, but especially since, I don't know, this this whole past year, I feel like I've really been kind of getting a new kind of return to form in terms of my lifting. Like, I'd kind of done it in addition to other things the past couple years, just finishing school or internships or working, that it was just like kind of something to check off the list during the day. But as we've talked about before, like when you first start, like it really becomes, you know, as soon as you finish your workout, you think of what you're going to do the next day and you get excited for it. And I'd kind of lost that. But this year, this past year, I'd really gotten it back because with the quarantine, like I would always look forward to training in the garage with Brock, (laughs) having an actual training partner, which I'd never really had before, which was nice. And then after that, like moving into here and kind of just re, I don't know, re kind of finding your uh or like trying to learn more 
with what you're interested in, if that makes sense. So I feel like, especially in here, I always see people that are, you know, they train hard and, you know, they work well and other things like that. It's not just like you're casual. So I almost feel like by proxy, I'm kind of like leeching from that a little bit more to where I'm like, man, I need to be going harder. And especially with yeah. the party in the gym, too, seeing people work really hard and stuff like that. And I don't know if necessarily like I don't know how you guys feel about this because I do feel like I get motivation from that. But I also feel like like that motivation was already there. But you sometimes just need like a catalyst for it. Mm -hmm. Um, so this year I've been really wanting to, uh, just feel like I have more of, I guess, like a sense of urgency because a lot of times I feel like I have good intentions at the start of the week as far as like wanting to have a good productive week. And then like you have a long day and then you're like, oh, I'll be better tomorrow. And then that turns into the next day. And the yeah. next thing you know, like the food that you initially prepped or got at the beginning of the week is still sitting in the fridge and it's Thursday or like <laughs> For me, I feel like I've been telling you guys a lot, like I don't really uh, plan out my meals kind of throughout the day. So a lot of times if I start my lift after my first client or something in the morning, I'll get like really hungry about 30, 45 minutes in. And then it's like, oh, well, let me just call it because I'm just like <laughs> that's kind of overpowering my like yeah. desire to train basically. So a lot of times I feel like the want is there but the execution is not there. So I really kind of wanted to feel like, you know, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is. So I reached out to a guy that I've been following for a long time, and I really like his approach. I've been following him through the years. Um, he's from the Netherlands. His name's Wesley Vissers, and he competes in the Olympia. And he's a really, like, just interesting bodybuilder um, in today's day and age because he really does pay homage to, like, the old golden era. And I really like it, the balance because... He's got his degree in like nutrition and dietetics. He's like a dietitian and he also like is very well versed in training principles or other things like that. But it's not necessarily just like, oh, studies say this or studies say that to where a lot of people I feel like nowadays it's all just by the book or this or that, that, you know, you, you can't really have your own personal experience or what works best for you. So I like that for him. He's like a good balance of like this is the tried and true old school method. And then this is also like beneficial in today's like you know day and age sort for of thing. sure so i like his blend because i don't know about you guys but for me i like the macro or like kind of understanding calories but i also like the the additional things that like oh this food gives you this benefit from mm -hmm. bo bodybuilding so that might be important to include in the diet or like you know this is the way to structure a program but also like the more esoteric, like, okay, this exercise helps to fill out the bicep a little bit more. And I don't know if you believe that or not, but, like, some things I do just like to where, you know, how you always hear about, oh, well, you can't – you either work the muscle all or you work the muscle none. Like, you can't yeah. really work your upper chest. But then you hear a couple of years later that there's something that does say, oh, well, you can actually yeah, bro target science more gets the upper proved chest. Right. So I like that, like – I don't know. The the elements to that, I still think that like bro science has its own credibility. So I like somebody that just has a, a good blend of that. So I reached out to him and I'll be working with him over the next few months and kind of just f figuring out like I want to do an actual gain kind of like bulk. I've never really done that because like we talked about last week over the years, I've always Fat Griffin just, status. Yeah. <laughs> so you might be seeing double chin mode and Memes especially, yeah. yeah. So 280. We'll see. Oh. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'd like to really grow. Um, I told him kind of my weak points. I sent a few photos, answered some questions. So I'm kind of curious. I've never worked with anyone before. So this will be a really cool experience. And I'm really excited just to have that like, feeling of every week kind of having like a goal to achieve and yeah. like almost making every day then as well something to really like give it your all on i'm really excited to have like a set you know meals and stuff to eat because i've been very loose with it and it's only me being the one holding me accountable and a lot of times i'm like oh i understand like <laughs> you had a hard day yeah. <laughs> it's really right nice there. though to your point to like kind of check the box off and know you know, if it's 12 weeks or three months, four months, whatever it is, that it's like, okay, one day completed of this, and you know you're building to something, you know. Yeah. When does that start? Because I'm interested to see, like, <clears throat> what the training program looks like. I think it'll start this week. Uh, he emailed me this morning, but I haven't read it yet. But um, I'm 
I don't know. I'll keep you guys posted. And yeah. I'm excited, too. The other thing is just uh, I really am looking forward to, especially somebody that I feel like I admire his physique and his approach, somebody like that to have an objective view or like a third-party approach to kind of be like, you know, this is what I feel like your weak point is or other things like that, as well as, I don't know about you guys, but me and Brock were talking about this the other day. A lot of times when I make a program where I'm like, all right, I'm going to start a new thing. I'm like, okay, well, you know, this is my favorite kind of split. And then if I'm going to do a push day, I like to start with this and then like, okay, this exercise feels the best. Yeah. And then I like this rep range. And then you find it's the same thing that you did before. So, or some similar vein to that. So I'm excited to just have somebody kind of like structure something yeah. and just help me get out of my own head a little bit, as well as for this, I think it'll be nice too, as a client perspective to then see like, okay, well, how does he approach things? And like, mm -hmm. what can I take from this as a trainer myself, like to apply to other people mm -hmm. too. So hopefully it gets you a little uncomfortable. It sounds like, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. And I don't know. I just really like, I, I've just been thinking about this a lot and I know we talk about similar stuff to this, but I just really want to go all in and like give a hundred percent and feel like I'm not leaving anything on the table. And I, I know that that's See how something far natural can take. Yeah. You. <laughs> well, I know that that's Natty something Daddy. that like you can't, I could do that, you know, by myself or like you can do that already. But I do feel like when there's something like to check you, I really want to like just rise to the occasion yeah. sort of thing. And really it's the other thing too, is there's this element of like, cause me and Brock, I know we've talked about this before, but like I kind of have a God complex and feel like, and I, I want to talk about this as a, a topic too. And just pointing down at your dick when you said yeah. that. So <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right, here we go. I'm God, God, God complex. <laughs> all right. I feel like for me, I know what's best for me. And it's yeah. hard for me to listen to somebody else or take orders because I feel like I know the right way to do it for me. And uh, in the same vein, I feel like since I'm always the one that's like overseeing my own thing, I'm really excited just to be like a student or like a not a dis disciple, but you know what I mean of yeah. like somebody that's just I'm answering to somebody else, but like it's for a greater purpose. Yeah, it's like a mentor. So per I'm se. just excited to kind of have like to not be the one in charge, yeah. but also like to be the one that's like setting the goal at the same time. 100%. You know what I mean? I think it's good that you can recognize that about yourself cuz I think I would um definitely say that I have that same kind of god complex and I think it makes it really hard like you mentioned to take control off or like to give control up yeah. um whether it is lifting or business or whatever or like even things as far as like you know where like Maddie and I were talking about like the where the competition bench should go. And I just get very rigid on how I want things done or yeah. how things should look. And you know, for I like how you do ask opinions, and you're like, <laughs> it just ends up yeah. your opinion. <laughs> ends up my way. Yeah. Anyway. Well, even like yesterday, I was like, we should get the mics like now, and y'all are like, fuck that. And then you bought them like an hour later, <laughs> and then we were talking about uh, who we'll have on the show soon. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I was like, oh, we should have her next week when we have the new mics. Y'all are like, that's stupid. Let's get her now. And then it ended up, it'll I be didn't like, say the, it was stupid. I just well, said we should act. You were against it though. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's good though to check yourself. Um, cause I think, you know, to some extent, I'm sure you would say this too, Griffin. I think it, uh, probably serves us as a net gain, yeah, absolutely. but, but there's definitely negatives and, and, and times you got to check yourself and say like, yeah. you know, and, and times I do notice where I like really do not only listen to opinions, but like really consider them, I think the end result is, uh, you know, better, or at least I, I, I give it a chance to, you know, see, okay, if this other person's idea or thought is actually better than mine. Um, yeah. so and sometimes I, I listen to that. I mean, I don't take, <clears throat> I think you do a phenomenal job at listening to both yeah. us yeah. being dickheads and just throwing out ideas at you, like even though you're like, think. yeah, well, I, and it's good that you have that. Cause I think it's allowed um gym flow to be what it is and uh, allowed us to create overcome lemonade yeah. and, and yeah. different things like that because that was an idea that i like pushed towards on you and you know i think yeah i think you know well, the, teamwork is important the other thing i feel like and this is kind of the topic i wanted to talk about is um kind of having i can't remember where i heard this but it it was basically a, a quote or a saying that was kind of like you basically have to have like a duality of two different mentalities one is you know best for you and like you know you kind of know you're the shit about what you want out of yeah. your your company or your product or your goal but on the other end like you have to also 
realize that you have a lot to learn and you don't know everything and you know you you still have a lot of growing to do so i kind of was gonna broach to you guys like what do you feel like there are some cases that you feel this mentality in because i remember when we were riding home from the nut bash like two years ago um we were talking about like the newsletter or some other things that you were trying to do in addition to just kind of selling product yeah. and uh I remember I was kind of talking to you about like, oh, you know, if I was a customer, like this is kind of what I would think. Or like when I experience this with other things that I'm interested in or I buy from, like this is kind of how I view it as somebody that orders something. And uh, I just feel like for you, you were very receptive to the things that I was saying. And you were like, oh, you know, I'm always the one that's like in charge or putting out this content. So I never really think about like the benefit that a consumer would get from seeing an ingredient profile or why we put this into a product or other yeah. things like that. So I was just curious, like with you guys, what do you kind of feel like, you know, I, I kind of know what I want out of this, but also like I have a lot more to learn in terms of this, if that makes sense. Still everything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Good I, I don't have like anything to pinpoint. Like I still, every time we talk about like creating a new product or something like that, I'm always trying to pick brains. Yeah. At least think about it, look into it. Like, I'm not like, oh, that's the way it is, and that's the way it's gonna be. I mean, I think staying, like the the, the I think of it like the spinning door. Like, I don't maybe that's not a good analogy. Like, you're always evolving, I guess. Like, uh, yeah. like there's always another levels to everything, and it's like I don't, I truly, I mean, I'm confident, but I, I'm truly, n I don't consider myself a master in anything <coughs> by any yeah. means. I was thinking about it this morning actually, that same kind of concept to where I was like, I feel like. You know, it's and I, I've said this like to you guys. It's not like every idea I come up with for gym flow is like killer. Most of them aren't, but I feel like at least ideas pop up in my head, and I feel like I can be creative and think a little outside the box. And like you said, think of think in the consumer shoes. But when it comes to like my own business and with the gym, I feel like I struggle with like a trying to think outside the box, and b like you know and think as that consumer or member. And B, a lot of it is because I understand what the day-to-day -day processes is, the expenses are, my financial situation, all these things. So it's like it's easy for someone to say buy more machines, but they don't understand like the cost of the machines, you know, shipping, uh, getting them in, fitting them in, different things. It's easy for them to say, um, you know, buy a safety squat bar, but then you know it's on back order, and then that's uh, like two fifty to put up right now, and it won't get here for another few months. I might, you know, so it's, it's, I don't know. It's a balance. It's like, I need to like consider that opinion and idea, but at the same time, like it's hard because I combat it instantly because I know the reality sometimes. Yeah. So it's, you know, keeping, keeping an open mind. It's, it's a balance. It's like a uh, seesaw, yeah, you know? For sure. For sure. I wanted to get back to your coach. Mm -hmm. You're going to be working with two questions. Mm -hmm. One, what are you going to do when he mentions cardio? Oh, <laughs> I will do it. I was actually talking to Maddie about this because I was saying before I ever reached out, I was like, you know, what if they say to eat this? And I'm like, oh, well, I don't really like this, but I can swap it out for something with similar macros or like, I don't really like that exercise and I'll swap it out. But I was like, you know, There's like, a reason let go. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're reaching out to somebody, it's same kind of thing as your own clients. Like, mm -hmm. How, you tried your own way. Look where that got you, basically. Yeah. A bad bitch. And and I like and I like that he emailed you and asked you like, what foods do you really want and what you don't want? You know. So he he is like definitely catering it towards like Griffin, and I like that. And at the same time, Griffin's still giving up enough enough control where he's like, you know, I'm sure he might have given him a few things, but for the general part, Griffin's like. Go for it, man. I got to well, have pizza every day. Yeah. I was listening. One, one yeah. big icky boo. One I was <laughs> listening last night to that bodybuilding podcast, and it reminded me a lot of, you know, this right now. They were talking about when they take on clients, a lot of the times their clients just want the motivation. They're hiring them for the motivation and not really to heed what they're saying. And I feel like, you know, that happens with my own clients, too. And it's frustrating, like, when you give somebody something and – you know, you feel like the effort that you're putting in is not being reciprocated by the person that hired you. It's yeah. like, you know, you want to work with me and I want to work with you, but where's that disconnect sort of thing? So I feel like that is one of those things that if you're reaching out to somebody or like this, like, you know, I'm just there to like 
follow. You know, I'm yes. not there to, you know, change things around as I want them to do or just get a template. Like, I want to actually do what you're saying because, you know, they know how to get you where you want to be. Sure. So, like, if you're just going to – it's kind of like when you look up a recipe and you see somebody give the recipe a bad review, but they're like, oh, well, I subbed in, like, brown sugar for this and, like – change this and reduce this and it didn't turn out so great it's like yeah well you didn't actually make the recipe sort of yeah thing. you made your own twisted disgusting version so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah if he tells me to do cardio i will do it so nice. might see me on that stairmaster hey. but it needed to happen eventually yep. so i guess you can't just skirt the boundaries forever number two question yes is now that you're going to be working for what 16 weeks yes i don't know if you mentioned that 16 there's got to be a stage in the insight, right? Oh, fuck. Well, well, this would be I, a growth phase. I I planned to oh, growth phase. yeah, gotcha. I planned to work you up to what I show, feel like brother. is a solid. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Like, Kevin <laughs> Lebrun, <Yeah. laughs> I get that Creed plan. Yeah, and everything changes. <laughs> but uh, no, I planned to because we were talking about potentially doing something in the future. So I figured. I need to have a solid base, and I feel like I need to correct my weak points, get the work ethic down, build up to something. Because I feel like right now, if I'm like 195, and I still feel like I'm very small, like if I'm dieting down to then compete in, let's say, a classic physique or something, there's not going to be anything to show on stage. I will say, one, it's like until your show lean, which you've been like... I'd say below 10% before. So you know like generally what you look like. But until you're like show lean, you don't know exactly how things look and what weak points are really prevalent. Yeah. And two is like natural, no matter what, you're going to feel like you don't have enough muscle or that you feel like small um, in comparison, you know. And I, I just feel like it's one of those balances to where I know I talked about it when I was competing with y'all. Is like there's like a fine line between – stupid shredded naturally but then you look like a skeleton up there yeah or you know you're a little bit above you know you 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 have abs but you probably got a little more fat than probably you need for the show but at least you look full and like you know strong i feel like there was an example of that like when i was on stage but then i feel like i i was happy where i ended up at to where it's like my abs were showing i wasn't stupid peeled but like i still feel like i didn't look like super hungry on stage but naturally it's so hard to like you know it's like where do you want to be i almost feel like i'd look to look at all three versions of myself and then be like okay that's what i want on stage let's go with that but it's it's tough naturally it's just like i don't know and then especially if you try and play the game of like loading sodium or carbs and you you might just like fuck up the show yeah you know 100 percent but I just wanted to ask that. Yeah, so I'll you know, I'll keep you guys posted how it goes. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens. I'm excited. I feel bad cuz I already like meal prep, so if there's different <laughs> things that he gives me this week, yeah. back to the grocery store. Yeah. So, Good. the other thing I kind of wanted to talk about in this uh same kind of threshold is uh, on the subject of meal prepping like yesterday, it felt really good and I haven't really done it too consistently. But I kind of figured yesterday, like, let me get in the swing of things and, like, actually fully do it before I actually, like, dive fully into working with somebody. But I uh, I came here early. I stayed a little bit later than I wanted to yesterday because we were working on photo stuff. But I went grocery shopping and then just spent the next few hours just meal prepping. And I forget sometimes how good it feels to just have everything portioned out, ready to go. Like, it saves so much time yep. and also, like... You know, you never know sometimes what those days will hold throughout the week. So having everything already prepared, you know, we've all heard that quote of like, you know, fail, fail to prepare, prepare to fail sort of thing. Yeah, it's one of my favorite quotes. um, It just felt so good. And like, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I sometimes feel like something like that is similar to if you're planning to lift and it's dark or it's rainy or it's cold or you're tired, like just kind of. Xing that out and kind of re- making that non-negotiable with yourself. Um, so, like, y- if you know that meal prepping is going to take a while, it's not, oh, well, will I do it or won't I do it? It's like, okay, well, how am I going to make this enjoyable? And, like, mm-hmm. how can I, like, best streamline this? So while I was, you know, waiting on stuff to cook or other things like that, I was working on a video at the same time and kind of just trying to make the most of my time. And it's one of those things that while I was doing it, I was like, Man, I've been getting in my head so much about this. Like, 
for almost months now that I feel like I almost stress myself out before I do it. Just being like, oh, I don't really have the time today to like finish all that or like, you know, that's going to take a while or I'm going to have to like wash a bunch of stuff. So like, let me just do it one thing at a time and like I'll just meal prep out for like Monday or Tuesday and then Tuesday I'll make stuff for the next couple of days. And that never really pans out. So yeah. mm -hmm. it felt good just to, to kind of like scrap everything that I had in my head and just like do it and get it all done. And then you're like, man, well, that was awesome. Like now I'm all prepared for the week sort of thing. So go. what are some things that you guys feel like you kind of check yourself or like have as, you know, whether or not I feel like it, like it's getting done today or this week or something like that. You want me to go? Sure. <laughs> um, nothing jumps out like super specific to me, but I like the idea of like making those non-negotiables and getting it done because I feel like that's where the, the the trap that most people fall in with exercise or diet is they give themselves the option of like doing abs at the end of the workout and they'll just be like, eh, tomorrow. I won't do it today or I'll do it tomorrow, yeah. putting it off, putting it off. Yeah. And, you know, it's easy to talk about it. You know, many people have gone over this, but I, I just think it's, I don't know, it's something that needs to just be like drilled into people's heads. It's, it's like you got to make exercise, make these uh things like saving X amount per month or whatever your goals are. You have to make them like non-negotiable. It's not like it's not if it's like when and, you know, oh, shit. Oh, wait, now I remember. <laughs> it's almost dropped my mind. Another thing I talked about, I need to look up whether it's Murphy or Phillips Law. If it can happen, it will happen? No, no. I think it's uh, I think it's Murphy's Law. But I've told you before where it's like you give yourself a certain amount of time to oh, complete oh, oh, something. Yes. I don't think oh, no, Murphy's Law is anything can go wrong will go wrong. That's not it. But anyway, point is, is some law that basically if you give yourself a certain amount of time to complete something, you'll get it done. So like if we put up on the whiteboard, the overcome, deadline. add, deadline, then you'll get it done probably like a day or two before on that day. Typically, yes. But if High you, of it but if you say, hey, we're getting this product shot done today, there is no other day. It kind of connects with the non-negotiable yeah. concept. Then it's going to get done. And I think if you, you do that more often with more tasks in your life, you realize – to Griffin's point, how much you can get done, um, which is one thing he gave me shit for when I told him yeah, before. Yeah, <laughs> I was mad at them the other day. Fair yeah. enough. We all have like a lot of stress. Yeah, up. but sure. but again, like we talked about earlier in this podcast, we all pull things from each other for for the better. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think we each make each other better in that way. But um, you know, I I think the more I can apply it to myself and practice what I preach, um, like today I'll probably have like a two hour gap after this podcast to like edit four videos and then. Uh, I have a client at four, and then I know after that I'm probably going to get home. So one thing that I'm doing is like, okay, I'm sitting down. These four videos, they're getting done. Like there's no option. And I know that that's something I do with a lot of the clients, um, at least with the style of videos that I do with people. I can get them done in a 48-hour period. And yeah. so I always set that deadline. Like I'll, t I'll probably – I'll know in the back of my mind, like, sure, if I tell them, hey, I'll get it done like first thing in the morning, they're not going to cry. They're not going to like say, I want my money back. But I have to set these deadlines for myself – to keep myself on track because like you said, just like food prep, you put it off, you put it off. And next thing you know, it's like, you know, you're just delaying these things for these people. And I think we're all naturally, everybody is human and you give yourself a little extra rope, you're going to take it. Yeah. And then that rope gets longer and longer and longer to where you're just like letting the shit show just come out and you're yeah. like, you know what? Screw it all. Yeah. And I'll start next week or do it whenever. I feel like you don't realize until you kind of have that mentality, like, how much you can get done with yeah. the window of time too. Cause like I know for editing, if I say, okay, I'll get this done, you know, before I leave tonight, you're surprised sometimes like how efficient you can be within that time window. Yeah. Or like mm -hmm. the other day before y'all came over for new year's, I kind of had everything taken care of that I needed to. So before Austin got there, I was like, you know, like, let me just like read this book <laughs> or something. And I got, I read like 30 pages before you yeah. came and it was like, 20 minutes basically so i was surprised like you know every other day i kind of just like put something on to listen to or like mm -hmm. do something else to where like if i just set aside that time like you know just a small 30 minute window like you can get a lot checked off the the dock it sounds so but, simple too but yeah. like it's seriously like you know when i if i gave myself 30 minutes to complete a video but then let's say that same video i gave myself an hour to get it done it'd probably take me like 45 or, or that full hour of time and 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 in between that instead of being efficient i'd be checking my phone i'd be scrolling on yeah. twitter i'd be getting up grabbing a snack like i just kind of bs i like fill the gap you know to yeah, make sure, sure oh i gave myself an hour oh i got it done in the hour and checking the box 
when really I could have done it much faster. And, you know, that opens up time to create. If yeah. you would have had the opportunity especially, to do three videos. Yeah, especially when, let's say, like when you have to do, like when you seriously have to do things, you have a busy day, right? That's kind of like it almost is non-negotiable, not even to your own point. Like you have to get yeah. these things done. But when, when it is like technically negotiable, like let's say I do have the free time to like space this video out, not get it done faster, then yeah, like it's so much easier to just put it off to take your time. But when, to, to like your point, if I still set the deadline, even when I technically don't have to, I actually have a pretty open schedule, I have much more free time to get other videos done, to be creative, to do whatever, to enjoy a podcast or to read a book. I can still kind of level up and continue to be productive yeah. because I set those deadlines. Um, sure. So I feel like time management is such an overlooked, um, just kind of toss to the side skill, and it kind of all connects with that. 100%. Well, when I listen to Andy a lot, and you know I'm not perfect, I'm still trying to uh, tighten the belt on myself, but you know him talking about putting urgency behind everything, it doesn't matter how little it is, because yeah. you placing the urgency behind that little thing will build that discipline to make sure everything is urgently done. Obviously, some things you have to be patient with or be aggressively patient, as he says sometimes, too, but, like, having urgency placed behind everything that, like, oh, if there's something on the list, doesn't matter if you have a little extra time, like you're saying, just go ahead and knock it out, get it done, because everything is urgent. Yeah, being yeah. a punctual person, I think, yeah. is an important trait. Um, Getting back to the question you asked earlier, though, I really didn't answer anything, but I, it, I had a clip of something that I heard or saw on Instagram, and I not that I hate the way it was said, but like it hit me though. It resonated with me and I was like, damn. But when I go to say it or retell it, it sounds kind of gay <laughs> or soft, but Gary v. It, was, <laughs> it was talking about, you know, setting goals or these little tasks for you to do throughout the day for yourself and or business relationships, whatever. It's just like, if you're giving, or if you're letting those things slide or go by the wayside, I mean, are you truly loving yourself by doing that? Like you, you should love yourself enough to take care of those little things. Yeah, we talked about this the other day. And yeah, I hate the way, like, do you love yourself? Like, it sounds like a therapist talking to you or something like that, or Tony Robbins or yeah. some shit. But, well, you know, do you truly, deep down, like, put yourself first? You should want well, this for yeah, yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of yeah. like if you skip out on, like, parts of a workout, like, you're only cheating yourself. Yeah, Nobody 100%. else cares. And the other thing is, like, I don't know how to phrase this, but it's like, if you are doing something and you know that you can be good at something and you have the the ability and the skill and everything is kind of there for you and there for the taking but you're just not taking advantage of the time or what's at your disposal like that's that i feel like that's one of the worst things in the world it's so like, disappointing you, know, you you have that potential and you have you know your whole life ahead of you to get it and it's like you're just letting it slip away. That's so what my caption was about today on my Instagram post. Plug myself. Yeah. But it's seriously, it's like if you have two hands, two feet, you're like able-bodied person, there's no reason for you to just be like wasting your potential. If you're like capable of like working harder, of, you know, trying to better yourself, be, you know, uh, stronger in the gym, lose the weight, do whatever it is, whatever goal you set for yourself. If you're just cheating yourself, putting things off, like slacking off, you're wasting your life. Yeah. It's just like wasted potential. Like you're so capable of, of fulfilling these purposes in your life or fulfilling your, your potential. And it's just like, you're just wasting it. But that's the other thing I feel like existing is knowing like what to, um, do yourself and like what to maybe delegate out. So like for you, Austin, if you feel like, you know, you can become a great like supplement company owner, or like really find your niche, like knowing necessarily not, everything has to be done by you. So like, I really appreciate you letting me take the reins on some of these shoots that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like I really like to like, I don't know, do the best I can for you, but it's nice to know that at least like, you know, I, I want to be there for you. So like, you can just like check that off your plate sort of thing, but not have to do it all yourself, like for that kind of stuff too. For so sure. it's been fun to, uh, to kind of do and do with you too. And last like note about like the, maximize the potential thing i was actually thinking about this in the shower both in my own personal brand in the gym but also gym flow i was like <sighs> what like drives me every day is like truly believing let's say the potential of gym flow is to be like a large supplement brand that like people recognize and know if you knew in like some possibility if things were done properly that's really like the height and the potential where it's at wouldn't you be pissed off that you wasted it and that you didn't give it your all or something like that yeah 
So that's why I feel like I want to give my body hell in training, why I want to push myself sleepless nights to, to make this gym happen or to get content up for Instagram or whatever because if I knew, oh, it's because I slacked off because I, I just these I made these things negotiable or whatever it is and I wasted that potential, even if I got 70% of that, it's not good enough. I could have been 100 and it's just so sad. I don't want to be regretful looking back is what I'm saying. you know Me and Griffin talked about this the other day. Damn. I mentioned it. I feel like every time we talk on the podcast, we're like, we talked about this. Me me and Griffin talked about it. I mean, similar kind of, but like. It's almost like we're here to Breaking off, I guess, in a little category of that is like, I I was talking to him about the coach and I was like, hey, if he says, hey, it's time to, if you really want to get there, you're going to take the dark side. You're going to start taking gear or some tests or whatever. And he's like, no, I want to see how far I can stick it out obviously seeing where my potential is. And I was like, you know, there's a saying from Socrates. I don't, I'm going to butcher it like a motherfucker, but it's something about growing old and not seeing the true potential of the human body. Yeah. And just yeah. willing away that. and just yeah. not like leaving, leaving shit on the table pretty much, yeah. knowing that you could have been more, but never saw your true potential. Not to see you have to take gear to do that, but, uh, you know, just not giving it your all. And I guess that sort of relates to that, which would suck, you know, with anything, whether it is working out fitness or business or relationships, just knowing there could have been more, but you'd, you know, you grew old and shit fell apart before you could ever see the full, like, top of the mountain, I guess, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's what, uh, not to keep, like, spiraling into different things, but I think I was talking to you about this, Brock, the other day, but, like, if uh, not to say that this has to be, like, bodybuilding. I feel like it always goes back to that. But if everybody bodybuild it, I wonder how many people would have great genetics for it that oh, just yeah, never yeah, get yeah. into it, you know? Yeah. So it makes me wonder, like, you know, with everybody, if there was more like not societal pressure, but like just a push in the direction to really like try to accomplish something and be like a master of your craft or at least just find something that yeah. you are passionate about or can put time and effort into. Like That's true. Wonder how great of like painters or musicians mm-hmm. or other things like that people would be aside from just like going to your job and then coming home and finding something to entertain you until you go to yeah, bed. Yeah, if everyone like just busted their ass and you have 100 at whatever they do, whether it's a janitor or a, a school teacher, yeah, like how productive our society could be. I feel like I'm up in here every day forcing something that shouldn't be with <laughs> yeah. weightlifting. Like I'm like my body, my genetics. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure – I'm to- totally fine, but like some days I show up, I'm like, am I? I am forcing this body yeah. to do some shit that it no, probably shouldn't. No. Do. <laughs> yeah, not built for at least. But I know. got a fun question I heard on uh, Fuad's uh, podcast that we can uh, wrap this baby yeah. up on. Let's go. So the question is about: um, Would you rather be a CrossFitter? So I'm I'm gonna actually twist it and say like, let's say it's not even lifting related. Would you rather be a runner for the rest of your life or lose a pound of muscle every time you nut or let's say runner for a year or lose one pound of muscle every time you nut. Oh, dude, I'm, being, I'm a runner yeah I'm just i'd be, be a runner, runner for life yeah i'd be a runner yeah for life griffin's like i could blue ball myself <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like considering it he's like Ugh. i don't know just Kegeling. that's a good question i guess i would say a, runner. a full pound but of i also muscle? feel like you know Waste I, i'm the bachelor of the group yeah. here so like <laughs> I could maybe stick it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just become a monk. Just and come like, home yeah. and pray to the... <laughs> be completely jacked. Yeah. I feel like he'll come in like veins on his forehead. Like, I haven't done it in like yeah. six months. To pray to I'm the uh, Germans, God. I'm a wizard now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but think about that, though. If you're a runner, you could never lift, so you'd be losing the muscle anyway. But maybe I'd find my next That's true right. love. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not saying wife wise, but like something I love to do. Yeah. But at least you'd maintain like some muscle, like running. Yeah. But uh, but just yeah, every nut you'd be like fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just feel dude. like you're with. I'd have to like, what, like you just have to stop <gasps> right before yeah. each time. No round two. Just yeah. no, no, two. Yeah. no no round two, and not even around one. It's no. just right before. All right. Yeah. Done. Yeah. yeah. It's like ah, that's enough. I'd probably get like something <laughs> and just like close it, cut <laughs> it off. It. Yeah. yeah. Clamp it right before. I'd be like, no, Sorry, hold it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like when you stop yourself peeing. Oh, dude, yeah. that's yeah. so illegal. And some people are like, "Oh, I can do it." I'm like, "Yo, that hurts." So I used bad. to be really skilled at it when I was younger. It hurts. But then I like tried it again, like my teen years, like now, and it's like one, not as like strong or fast. No. And two, yeah, it doesn't feel good. And you got some dribble going on. Yeah, that, well, that's what I mean. But when I was younger, I felt like it was like on a Clamp. dime. Yeah. I was like, the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, know what's also tough is peeing 
on a moving like anything that's moving so like if oh, you're shit. like peeing like because i did it in bermuda i was peed off the side of the boat multiple times instead of jumping in and getting wet i just try to pee and like with the wa- the waves and like the wind just oh whip, the wind's just, tough just too blowing on it a yeah. little bit it's yeah. like it's stage fright it's, yeah. it's yeah. funny <laughs> um sometimes <laughs> when uh i'm peeing before i run like there's a little spot like off the trail and uh, especially when it's cold, like just steam rolling off of it, it's oh, funny yeah. looking. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's me. cooking with heat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever did that, but like, especially growing up more in the country, like always just going outside and finding a tree or something. Oh, yeah. But it's just like you said, when it's cold, yeah. it's like, yeah, that that heat's coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm proud of that. Yeah. Well, that's the end of this show, guys. Hopefully, you all enjoyed the new mic setup yeah. and the new yeah. sound. I think my camera cut off a few times, which is, I don't know what's going on with that. Tag us if you shave your legs. Yes, please do tag us. And tag us if you listen to the show. We'd love to get the tags, see who's all watching this thing. And uh, we appreciate all the support, the love. And we will catch you all next week. Follow us all down in the description below. And until next time, guys, we're out of here. See you.